Hello, my name is Giorgio Biancoroso. I'm a professor of music at HKU. Welcome to Orchestral Spotlight, an innovative series conceived by HKU Muse in collaboration with the Hong Kong Philharmonic. Today, I'm delighted to have Aziz Barnard here with me, principal percussionist of the Hong Kong Philharmonic. Thank you, Aziz, for uh, agreeing to be here, to being here today. Uh, and thank you also for agreeing to, uh, to doing this with us. Uh, this is a new innovative concept that takes each orchestral section as the center around which uh, a repertoire is designed and eventually performed. What I'd like to hear from you, as is today, is uh, maybe something about what makes uh, a section uh, such a strong feature of the orchestra and what are the dynamics that guide uh, the functioning of the section and also the relationships among different sections of the same orchestral ensemble. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, percussion section in orchestra is uh, nobody's playing in strict rhythm on the stage. It just never happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, and it shouldn't because it's not, uh, the ensemble's too large and for the, by the time the sound crosses the stage, you're, you know, strange things happen. So you have to always account for this. And so that's the art of our section is playing a little bit at a time, but making it sound like it's in time for everyone else. And uh, one of my teachers would say, you know, you, you got to give them something to play to up down in the front of the stage. So that's kind of what we're doing. And, how do you calibrate the dynamics of it? Um, well, the instruments are themselves vary so much in their natural dynamic range that you kind of, sometimes you're just putting the brakes on an instrument a lot, xylophone, it's just, you, you know, you just tap the thing and it's, it's usually enough. Uh, some instruments though, you don't, you can't hear it so well in an orchestra. It's interesting, like a marimba, it's tough to hear in an orchestra actually. Mm. We were talking uh, earlier about, uh, before the broadcast started, about timpanis uh, versus the percussion. Could you uh, explain a little, uh, a little bit uh, the, uh, the difference? Timpani are, of course, a percussion instrument, naturally. Uh, uh, but then it has to do with just the historical progression of orchestras. And, uh, you know, your Haydn and Mozart, there's timpani in uh, many works, operas, symphonies, and. Uh, and whatnot, uh, but not much percussion. Percussion in these days is still very much a folk happening in some ways. And then, you know, progress uh, another generation, another few generations. Yeah, you start adding some percussion parts into into pieces. And I mean, so it's just a later addition to the orchestra, and so it became its own section. And there's usually timpani happening, uh, and so they just there's somebody there all, all the time playing it. And again, what's your, what's your anchor in the orchestra, uh, if any? Is it the conductor, maybe a, uh, a particular, another section? Um, it really it depends on um, how far away the section is from my actual location on the stage, mm. and, uh, which becomes awkward if you're playing a continuous rhythm. You're playing an ostinato, but now you're with the horn who's right next to you, and then you're with the violins across the stage, and then the basses. And, and so actually you're adjusting back and then forward. And, but it, if you're playing with the sound that you hear from the front of the stage, you're late by a mile. So it becomes strange that you're playing ahead of what you hear. Uh, and then uh, it, you have to keep the distance you're ahead the same. And then you hear them start to get a little bad. Oh, they're taking some rubato and you give them a little space. But, so there's a lot of uh, anticipation and I'm like, yeah, they're gonna take time here and I give them, you know, or the brass is gonna take a breath. And, um, and as, as a result of this, you, have to, you can't play straight rhythms. You have to always stylize a little bit. Taking a look at the repertoire uh, for um, the uh, May 16th concert, uh, I noticed a lot of 20th century music, you know, obviously. Could you walk us through the repertoire a little bit? Uh, sure. Just a few highlights and, and tell us what guided the, uh, the design of the repertoire, the choices you made with your colleagues. We, uh, I collaborated as a group a little bit. Uh, I don't want to say like I programmed the, you know, we all sort of, you know, made suggestions and, um, and in a way they're, uh, I don't want to say standard, but they're, they're uh, very characteristic, uh, as you're saying, some 
especially mid 20th century percussion ensemble uh, writing. Um, of course, the, the most famous work on the on the piece is, of course, the Cage Third Construction, um, which I like John Cage because uh, there's something for me quintessentially Californian about about it somehow to me, um, and I think it's fun and frequently silly, and uh, and yet he's invariably labeled as this uh, serious artist. Profound. Profound. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I'm always, if there's just a, there's one picture of him smiling where I kind of get, feel like he gets the joke somehow. I think yeah. with the mask on, Cage will be pretty much inscrutable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but maybe Those even without eyes, yeah. yeah. And uh, well, this makes me wonder though, um, if you play these pieces as, as a chamber ensemble, then the kind of rehearsing you're doing uh, is, is very different. It's all different, yeah. Because you're not just learning the music, you're actually shaping a performance. How different is that? And how novel to some of your colleagues or maybe to yourself? Oh, uh, well, the question I'm always asking on stage is what can I get away with exactly? And because like I said earlier, if you're playing it too straight, you get your, you get, get in trouble, um, musically speaking. Obviously. So you want to have a bag of tricks and see what you can get away with. In a percussion ensemble, it's gets you run into the problem of less limitations and uh, exposure. You can, yeah, you can run wild and have fun, but but the, these some of these pieces, like oh, another reason I like Cage, you can find these weird instruments that just sound strange and. Uh, and the orchestra sometimes that's, we don't. You know. can't do that. Sometimes you do, but sometimes it should just be beautiful. And uh, but in, uh, some of these other ones, it's fun to make some strange noises. Uh, one uh, uh, one particularly interesting uh, um, element of the program is the inclusion of a, a piece by a young Hong Kong youth composer, Wang Jing, Wang Jing, who's a um, year one PhD uh, candidate in composition working with my colleague, uh, Chan Ying Hian. And um, uh, she, she has a very interesting background. She studied at the Central Conservatory of China in Beijing. Then she went to Cologne uh, to do a master's in composition. Now she's back here. So she has a very international outlook. At the same time, she's very interested in uh, up, um, keeping up this um, uh, tradition within Chinese music of mimetic, uh, mimetic sounds of attempting to capture the sounds of nature. And so it looks like her piece is an attempt to uh, exploit the extraordinary range uh, of a percussion ensemble to, uh, to depict a situation. Uh, we are especially grateful that you're willing to do this because we strongly believe um, uh, in uh, letting composers uh, collaborate with performers during the compositional process itself and not just after. Have you had a chance to um, talk to her or look at her piece? Uh, I haven't worked with, uh, with her before and I, I haven't seen her piece yet. I'm ex excited to. I understand it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, taken from uh, Tang Dynasty writings uh, you know, describing um, uh, garden. And th this is, uh, with regards to her, the her piece, it's, brings us to something with percussion we deal with a lot where you there's this intersection with avant-garde and the traditional mm. that the two seem to can't can't escape each other somehow that uh, um, even the most avant-garde composers end up using the most traditional instruments and and so forth and almost depicting uh, nature and this is this is what she's doing but there's a that's perhaps avant-garde in the west that's not avant-garde uh, in these parts though and uh great great tradition of it and i'm looking forward to see what she uh uh she writes i hope everyone comes to see her piece when we perform it well aziz thank you so much thank for you. this uh very insightful uh comments um i very much look forward to hearing you uh on may 16th and thank you all for listening and we look forward to welcoming you too to Orchestral Spotlight on May 16th. Thank you very much.